Turning now to pioneering businesswoman, philanthropist, <laughs> and pro sports team owner, that's Sheila Johnson. She is part owner of the NHL's Washington Capitals, the NBA's Washington Wizards, and has a stake in the Washington Mystics of the WNBA. You go, Sheila. Johnson, who co-founded BET, was recently named CEO of the Year by Washington Business Journal, and she owns five-star resorts around the world. She is a badass. CBS Saturday Morning co-host, that's Michelle Miller, spoke with Johnson about how she became the first black female billionaire and the personal challenges she overcame along the way. Go Caps! When it comes to the Washington Capitals, Sheila Johnson's what you call a proud vocal partner. Did you ever see yourself as a professional sports mogul? No, I wouldn't call myself a mogul. Still, the 2018 Stanley Cup champ scored an ultimate trifecta for her. I know when things are going to work and when they're not going to work. I, I really trust my instinct. Making Johnson the first and only black woman with an ownership stake in three professional sports teams. I have the wonderful WNBA national champions, 2019 Washington Mystics. Drop the mic. I have the Wizards, <laughs> which we're still working on. <laughs> for a title, and then we have the 2018 NHL Capitals. And how does that fit in? It's my side gig. <laughs> it's my side gig. Her story begins in Maywood, Illinois. Her mother, an accountant, her father, one of only 11 black neurosurgeons in the country. You talk about learning resilience. We had to move 13 times because my father could not practice in white hospitals. And um, everyone asked me, you know, moving that much, what was your childhood like? And I thought it was an adventure. <laughs> Her first act in life was as a concert violinist, but it was in 1980 that Johnson took the first step in building an empire when she co-founded BET along with her ex-husband. Talk about those early days. What was your vision? The whole purpose of starting BET was to give the African Americans a voice. It was the birth of cable. And everything that was being pumped out there from CNN to Nickelodeon, you name it, nobody talked about the importance of the African American voice. If I could do it all over again, my voice could be listened to, I think the network would have looked a little different. More news, less entertainment. But by 2001, the network sold to Viacom and cemented to Johnson in history as the first black woman billionaire. You don't like that title. I don't like it. Why? Money's not everything. It's how you use what you have to make things like work and make your life work. Her life took a turn when she divorced in 2002, a pivotal moment where she realized she lost herself in her marriage. You then kind of withdraw into the shadows and take on their identity. And one of the biggest lessons I've learned in life was that shouldn't have happened. I lost sight of who I really was. You emerged after the divorce. It took me two years, but I figured out finally who I was. It was like a rebirth. Shortly after, she remarried, and that rebirth became the jumping off point for her hospitality empire that now includes everything from a PGA golf course to resorts around the world, including the Salamander in Middleburg, Virginia, a place she now calls home. It's buzzing. She had this idea. Betsy Davis has lived in Middleburg her whole life and says since the opening of the resort in 2005, this area has seen a growth in business by almost 70 percent. There's a difference in thriving and surviving, and, and we will always survive. But this energy that's helped us to really thrive. A stone's throw from horse country is the nation's capital and a cause close to the longtime equestrian, creating a better life for police horses. The living conditions of these horses was unbelievable. We saw rats in the grain areas where, you know, they get their food. You could see the desperation in their eyes. And they had been in those weeds since 1976 with the purpose that they were going to get a new home, but it never happened. And she did. On the left here is where the 
by helping to raise over $22 million to build these new stables. People don't realize, yeah, you've got the nation's living room here, but this living room has to be protected. Using her empire to give back is at the core of Johnson's work, a far cry from the little girl whose childhood dream was to take the classical music scene by storm. My mother always told me to never say can't. She hated that word, that you can't do something. And I think especially for young women, they need to find out who they are first. And this is a very important path. Mm -hmm. Johnson says she's now in her third act and is the happiest she's ever been. I don't regret anything that has happened to me personally or anything because I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. And everything that happened to me has made me who I am now. And it's been a big year for Johnson. She acquired the prestigious Mandarin Oriental Hotel here in Washington, and she might be adding another sports team or two to her roster. Both the Washington Nationals, the baseball team, and the Commanders, the football team, could be up for sale by the end of this year. And she and her partners, they're high up on the list of potential buyers. Another Nate, sports right? team. Wow. Wow. How about Jeez. that, Michelle? Michelle, you captured her beautifully. Listen, yeah. I have such admiration for her. She is such a badass, and she is such a class act. So we know it, it seems that divorce certainly was very difficult for her, but she came back with a vengeance. She found new love. She's now a huge, huge force in the business industry. You really did her justice. So thank nice you. I mean, she's very, she's transparent and and yes. humble. You know, you don't find many uh, humble multimillionaires out there, but she's one of them. Oh man, she's awesome. Yeah, well done, Michelle.